Okay, so first, let's take this place stitch holder or stitch marker out. We no longer need it. We didn't need it. Um, since we got to the red, we no longer needed it, but I just left it in there because it was not really urgent. It wasn't a great need to take it out. All right, and so now it's time to weave with our weaving needle this excess yarn here, the tail, into the body of the work. So basically you thread it through the needle and sometimes you may have to roll it a little bit to get it a little bit pointy and then get it through and then pull All right like that and now I'm going to turn it around and there are many ways that you can weave this some people go through the top just in and out like that okay some people keep it on the inside and go through the stitches. I think that's the one I'll show you today. Okay, so just kind of go through the stitches, the backs of them like that. Okay, and then pull it through. Okay, so you have that. And then go back in the other direction. in and out, weaving in and out. The more you do this, the more you pretty much guarantee yourself that it won't come undone. Okay? And then you pull. Okay? And I like to, I like things to be symmetrical, so since I went that way on that side, and this is kind of like the center point, you know, I want to go to the other side and do a little bit of it as well. Just a little bit, because I don't have a whole bunch of yarn left with this tail, okay? And then I turn it around a bit, and I go back in. Okay. Okay. Now I like to kind of tie a knot. So I'm just going to pick any old stitch. Hope this is visible. See if I can get it a little clearer. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, pick, you know, a stitch and go in. And then I like to bring the yarn back through it like that. See I'm see that I'm holding that little loop there so that I can bring the needle back, that loop right there like that alright and then I'm going to tie it down like that and now I'm actually going to tie another knot just with my finger you can do a fin your finger or you can use your crochet hook to get in there and bring it out but this is long enough where you can do it with your fingers like that and tie it okay so this is pretty secure I, you really don't have to worry about this coming undone even before we started weaving the yarn with this initially remember we did that chain stitch that helped to create a knot so we did a knot there and then we weaved one direction and went back and that kind of secured it and then we went the other direction and came back and that secured it and then I did a knot with the with the needle that secured it and then I just did another knot with my fingers and that further secured it and so at this point if you want it you could cut it off right there I kinda like to leave a little tail honestly I'll shorten it because it kinda serves especially when I make these for people you know these don't have tags like 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 uh, articles of clothing hats and stuff right so this kinda serves as like my tag so the person always knows where the back is. Of course I know where the back is. I can see each of these chain threes, right? Except for the very bottom, which is chain two. So I know where the back is, but people that don't crochet, people that don't, you know, make these tams, they don't necessarily know what the back is. So I usually leave, especially when I'm making them for people, I will usually leave the tail there so that they can always locate the back. And then when I when you know I tell them to put it on, just tell them I tell them to tuck it in like that. It's like that. It's that simple. Now, 
these tales, in my opinion, are even more necessary when you have um, when you're making towns that use continuous rows, where this place stitch marker is absolutely necessary. Um, so I definitely leave the tail and to let me know where the back is, um, even for the towns that I make for myself with continuous rows. So that's that, right? And it won't be visible when you tuck it in. Or if you really, you know, didn't like it, you could just cut it all the way down just to where the knot is and it would be fine. These little pieces that are hanging out, you could cut them down if you want as well. You know, it's not a big deal. It's on the inside, so no one will ever see it. It doesn't bother me. Um, the last thing I want to show you is if you turn the tam inside out. This was that first tail. This was the beginning thread, believe it or not. That first tail that we made when we made the slip knot. Okay? So one of the things that you can do is pull on it to kind of close the hole up a bit. See how it kind of closed up a bit? Okay? I could have left I could have left more of a tail made it a little bit longer um, because something that you can do is kind of feed it through the needle right like that and then you can go across and through so across the way so imagine this is like a little river <laughs> So I'm over here, I need to get over there. So I jump over the hole, over the river, and go through a stitch, and then bring that through, like that. And then I pull, like that. And I just continue doing that all around. What that does is it helps to close up that hole, so that it's not visible from the outside. Because some people are concerned about that, you know? Um, and then once I've done that enough times, then... I'll tie a knot, so I'll try to get one more out of this. I don't have much thread to work with. Alright. Alright, so now I'm going to tie a little hole. I'm sorry, a little knot. And kind of push that down before I pull tight on it to knot it up. And then I'll cut this down a little bit. Doesn't matter, like I said, this is the inside, so no one ever sees it anyway. But what you have on the outside is, you remember how you could see the hole on the outside? When I pulled on the tail and then, um, so that, when I put on the tail, that closed the hole a little bit, and then weaving in and out a couple of times around, you know, jumping across the river or whatever, <laughs> that helped to further close it and secure it. So, yeah, this is my Tam, you guys. A little tell telling me where the back is here. Um, let me lift the camera up over it so you can see it in all its glory. <laughs> so yeah, that my friends is how you make a tam. Maybe one day I will show you how to make a broom, um, but for now you can just make tons of tams like this and. Um, Maybe I should go put it on and show you how it fits. That's what I'll do as well before I say goodbye to you guys. All right, so yeah, hopefully, you know, everything up to this point has been super helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll check in and the final part. I have no no idea what part this is at this point. <laughs> I told you guys it was going to be the arduous task, but, you know, I feel happy that I've done it. So, all right, I'll see you in the next part with it on.